It's clear that modern feminism doesn't value men. I would say it's quite the opposite. They hate men. I grew up in a culture where this was the version of men and masculinity. This is the version of men and masculinity that now it's being jammed through our throats. Happy birthday. What time is it? I think it's, um, I think it's baby making time. We can do it in that position that don't even feel good. It feels good for you. I'm saying for me, it's just more about a baby survival of the species. Are you mansplaining my car? Do you notice any subtle differences? They're quite hard to catch, but if you look long and hard enough, you will find them. Modern feminism, although being harmful also to men, I think it's deadly to young women. And I will give you all the reasons why that is. We should start by asking ourselves, who is this modern feminism actually hurting the most? Is it men or is it women? Let's start with hookup culture. The idea that this sexual liberalization has benefited women the most, I think it's utterly ridiculous. 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 This class is ridiculous. Very good. Historically speaking, men have always had the short end of the stick when it comes to sexual partners. It's a very tiny proportion of men who have the most sexual opportunities. That means that most men have no sexual selection at their disposal, and women have almost all. That's translated into 80% of men being practically invisible to women, and only 20% of men having sexual opportunities. Now, let's ask a question about hookup culture. Who does it benefit, men or women? Let's go back to those numbers. Only 20% of men have sexual opportunities with women. If there's no boundaries whatsoever in sexual dynamics and relations, sexual freedom, that means that the majority of women will only want and will date that 20% of men. They will have no intimate relationships with any of those men. This is of course generalizing, but nevertheless, it holds true. Women will share that pool of 20% of men who have all the opportunities with them. Men, of course, given our nature, will take advantage of those opportunities and will only want to sleep with them without any prospects of a long-term relationship. So who does hookup culture actually benefit? Well, men. Usually men are not as emotionally attached to sexual encounters as maybe women will be. Again, this is generalizing, but nevertheless holds true. That leaves women emotionally detached from this men that they have sexual encounters and they feel betrayed because they're all essentially sleeping with the same man. I found a guy told me I was a star. Why I hate dating apps. Baby girl, you don't look good at all with that wig on. I am a fighter and not a quitter. I am resigning. They blame men for being horrible and only wanting sex, not looking for a long-term relationship. But if we go back to the numbers, it's actually women who dictate the dynamics of sexual relationships. It's women who dictate the rules of the game. Men just play. If the rules they dictate is that it is possible and easy for men to use them only for sex, men will play that game and only use them for sex. In my opinion, I can be wrong, but in my opinion, it's actually women who have created hookup culture, and now they are paying the price for it. No emotional connection with sexual partners, having to stand that they're all dating the same men, dealing with the consequences of having a lot of emotional baggage. By the time they realize the errors of their ways, it's too late, and men don't want to have long-term relationship with them. And of course, they blame men for that. And even worse, if you're the type of woman that actually values long-term relationships, traditional values like family, being a traditional woman, etc., they will treat you like a traitor to their cause. Teaching women that the most important thing in life is their independence. Men don't care about how much money you make, 
how independent you are, and how high in your company you've risen. Men couldn't care less about those. Ideal girl. Yeah. Someone smart, someone funny, yeah. someone pretty. Really her being nice and taking care of me. What women think matter to men actually don't. We don't care about your money. We don't care that you're independent. We don't care you are a quote unquote boss bitch. Like no one cares about any of that. Loyalty. I would need my, my woman to be my friend because I don't just want to be with someone that's not, that I don't get along with. As long as you're mellow and you're chill, I like a girl that doesn't fuck with nobody. I don't want no girl that has a bunch of thought ass friends. I don't want none of that shit. What about your height? Height? Yeah. That doesn't bother me really. The things that are taught to women, as in what they should do in life to be happy and what actually makes them happy, it's so distant from each other that is actually painstaking to watch. By and large, men look for quality of character rather than quantity of value in women. They look for nurturing and caring qualities rather than how many people you manage or are below your pay grade. They look for youth and beauty rather than years of experience in the workforce and in life. It's so funny to watch. But what they're teaching women that they should look for in life and do, forge yourself a career, become independent, make lots of money, don't rely on anyone, climb up the corporate ladder, etc. Those are the qualities that women look for in men. It's absolutely crazy. The other side of that coin is what they're teaching men to look for in life or to be in life. Be more emotional, don't be so assertive, don't be so competitive, be more caring, etc. Those things are qualities that men look for in women. We've got it absolutely backwards. <sighs> now, that doesn't mean I don't think women should be able to win a lot of money or be able to climb the corporate ladder, be assertive, etc. It's a free country, you do you, I don't care about what people do in their life. But if you're a woman, and after all those years doing all those things, you're at the top of your career, you made a lot of money, you're very independent, and then you find out that you cannot find a partner and then blame men for that. Well, it's because men aren't at my level. Why can't I find good men? Let me break your bubble, honey. Men aren't attracted to any of those qualities. You are attracted to those qualities. Absolutely, completely fed up with the, the thought of dating. I'm, you know, I am 40 years old. I am 40 years old and I feel like dating is eight zillion times worse than like high school or, or like my, my twenties. And let me tell you something, dating in my twenties was a disaster. It was horrible. Men were awful. Boys, boys were awful. And this is so much worse. It is so much worse. Uh, what happened to you guys between, you know, 18 and 40 like I mean I don't understand you know I uh, the ghosting the you know courting somebody you know oh let's date oh but never mind I'm just I'm emotionally not ready I'm, you know, like, I cannot cannot anymore if you find out that to men a 20 year old woman working as a waitress is way more attractive to them than you, a 43-year-old lawyer with a penthouse and a Porsche, tough luck. The other thing is, men have always oppressed women and still do. It's a common belief of modern feminists that men have always oppressed them and kept them down over the ages. That men throughout history have basically dominated women on a sort of slave-master relationship throughout all history. I don't know what kind of history they've read, but the history that I know is that life was pretty much shitty for everyone, men and women. If you weren't from the royalty or the church, and before that, the people that ruled everyone else, and I mean everyone else, was just surviving as best they could. Then they tell you that women didn't get votes until 100 years ago, they couldn't own land, all those things that they say. But was that a consequence of men's oppression? I mean, I don't share those opinions. Women should be able to work, should be able to own land, whatever. I'm not against that. What it looks like to me, and again, I could be wrong, but what it looks like to me is that men try to protect women. There was no birth control, so fathers tried their best to pair their daughters to good men. Of course, there are exceptions. There's exceptions to everything in this life. But 
my my opinion is that most men are good men and most men have throughout history been good men that love and respected women women didn't go to war men did men died in wars they died in dangerous jobs in factories which was most jobs during the industrial revolution they died sailing for various reasons so was it really oppression that kept women at home or was it simply that men were trying their best to protect them my God. Captain, the lifeboats are ready to go. Should we load the women and children first? No, men and children first. Excuse me, sir. It's 2022, Private. A woman can handle a sinking ship just as well as a man can. And if you don't think so, you're a misogynistic asshole stuck in 2008. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, for the time being, I am requiring men and children only. Are you kidding me? It's 2022. This is what you wanted. You wanted to be treated equal to men? Well, this is how men are treated. Like shit. No, we don't. We just say that half the time. We don't actually believe in it. Yeah, we do. Come on, we're just as capable as men are. Shut, Shut up. up! I identify as a man! Jack, do you think I could come up on the door? It's 2022, Rose. I wouldn't want to imply that you can't handle the ice cold water the same way a man could. I think I'm dying, Jack. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I love 2022. Again, there's exceptions, but my opinion is that by and large, most men are good, honorable men that love and respect women, not tyrant oppressors cracking the whip. The other thing they say is that the world today is a patriarchy and it's always been a patriarchy. It's astonishing to me that women attribute the reason that we live in a patriarchal society that out of the Fortune 500 companies, most are run by men. That's something that you hear pretty often as a reason of validity to explain why we live in a patriarchal society. Not because in today's free society, both men and women have the same opportunity to choose the jobs that they will undertake. And again, by and large, there's a tiny proportion of men who will choose these jobs but that's not the majority of men. The majority of men don't have billion dollar companies or billion dollar hedge funds to run. They're mechanics, plumbers, electricians, drivers, work dangerous jobs, etc. It's always a tiny proportion of the job market that they choose to focus on. And for that matter, positions of power, such as politicians. They always attribute the reasons of the existence of a patriarchal society to those indications of symptoms of its existence without realizing how absolutely absurd that claim is. <laughs> without realizing that in as close to a free society as ours has been able to get is the free choice of its citizens that lead to those differences in choices between men and women. If a woman wants to be CEO, hey, go ahead. She has to earn it like any man would. If she wants to be a politician, be my guest but she has to earn it. They can't just give it to her because she's a woman. The firefighter trials are easier for women to have more women firefighters because in the past, there has almost been no women in the fire force. I hope our house doesn't burn. And a woman that weighs 120 pounds has to pick me up and save me because I'm dead. Thank you very much for watching. And like always, see you in the next one.